Okay, Adam Bazaljet here, two-time PGA Teacher of the Year down here in Florida and founder of Scratch Golf Academy. Jack Nicklaus, one of my favorite golfers of all time. Going to have a look at his swing here today, so stay tuned. Okay, so let's have a look at Jack here. Obviously, arguably the greatest player in history, uh, almost inarguably, really. Tiger's record certainly stacks well up with it. Bobby Jones did if he hadn't retired so early, but uh, nobody's won the tally of majors nor seconds and thirds Jack had. A couple of the things he did really well, uh, amongst the legion of things he did really well, a phenomenal thinker and pressure player, a great pressure putter, a great tactician and strategy guy around the golf course. But the tools he carried where he hit the ball really, really a long way. Uh, with today's equipment, there's no question he'd be one of the longest handful of players in the game. Uh, and with that, he hit the ball really high. Uh, it wasn't like he hit a low, boring shot that ran out there. He hit a high shot. The other thing that was uh, a hallmark of Jack's ball striking career was he never had a problem hooking the ball. He told a friend of mine once that under pressure, he never feared hitting it left, so it helped him manage his game. He's mentioned that before many times. Uh, so he hit a ball a long way, and if anything, hit a little fade. So let's have a look here. Instead of minutiae and detail, what are a couple of the things that helped him do that? The biggest thing is he makes a big, big coil off the ball, and that his arms and club respond to that. He never whips the club back without turning. So his power sequence is terrific. Big wind up, arms responding to that, and then Similarly, in the downswing, the lower body slams into motion there, and the arms are responding to it again. And you create a lot of whip-like motion and potential speed when you do that. So let's have a look at Jack from this angle. Big coil off the ball. Again, he, always, he was always taught to keep his wrists and arms pretty straight in the takeaway. He didn't cock his wrists a lot at the beginning. And Jack allowed himself to coil more by letting this heel raise and letting his knee move a little bit. But it's very important to note that only happens late in the backswing in response to all this pivot. So it wasn't like he wasn't creating torque and tension. His upper body coiling a lot more than his lower body. But he really freed it up and allowed himself to raise his left heel and let his left hip move a lot. Now, I'm going to say to you that a lot of people, if they're not pretty darn coordinated and don't practice a lot, they make that much coil, they're going to have a hard time hitting the ball solidly. But it's certainly something you might allow for a little bit more of, a little bit more pivot and left heel raise. And just watch how he slams that left heel back on the ground and how the club responds to that. So it's, it's lower body, then trunk, then arms, then club coming down in the perfect sequence for power. And as you watch Jack here, we'll look at a different view of him. Let's look at that view. A little bit catty corner, a wonderful flow to the swing, a very free flowing long motion. And of course, that's what helped him create so much power. Let's have a look down the line. Here's maybe an insight as to why he didn't have a problem hooking the ball, other than he was a genius golfer that had spectacular coordination and pretty much could do whatever he wanted with the ball. This is the famous 18th uh, final round at Augusta in 86. This is the 18th tee. Jack always let the club stay over here in front of him. He never let the club get behind him. So important for, for, for keeping control over the club. Once it whips behind your hands, you start to get your hands involved with the swing. In most cases, there's been a few great players did that, but not too many. Uh, and keeping the club in front of you, responding to your turn, really helps you not hit those hooks. Now, it's important to notice, even though the club stays in front of him, his arm gets pretty far across him due to his pivot. And that's a power move. You don't want to just pick your arms up. Big hip turn, slams the left heel on the ground. And again, as he comes down, you don't see the club get behind him too much. Not the greatest filming there, but it's definitely not coming from here. And he gives it a little of that shape. That's about where he hit that shot with that three wood coming off this tee. So club stays in front of him beautifully. Stays in front of him the whole time. Even there, the club hasn't rolled over too much. So you can't obviously see the club head in detail, but it stayed in front of him. He hit a little fade there. So to me, those are the things Jack did really well. He made a very free flowing long swing. Very, very powerful pivot and lower body motion with arms 
certainly subservient and reactive to that. That's where his power came from, and he kept the club in front of him. So let's, let's talk about how you can apply that to you here a little bit. So let's see a couple of the things that Jack did and how you can incorporate them into your game. So first big thing we stressed was that Jack made a big aggressive turn and critically he used his turn to influence his arms. And you can create a tremendous amount of whip-like speed in that direction. Here's a couple of drills I would recommend for you. Get yourself a pivot position like this, nice athletic posture. Make a good pivot of your middle so you really feel like your shoulders have turned about as much as they reasonably can. And then do it, but let your heel raise off the ground a bit. Let your left knee move a little in response to that. Once you've felt that, go ahead and slam back down and unwind through. Now, if you wave your arms around a little bit, you'll feel the blood kind of rush out to your fingertips. They'll get a little tingly out there. What I want you to do is let your arms hang here. Start to make that pivot, smaller scale and eventually bigger scale and start to feel how your pivot influences your arms, almost like an elephant kind of waving its trunk here, and do it until you feel the blood rush out to those fingertips. And do it with enough motion and freedom that you can stay in balance, but you really feel like you can create some energy and some speed. And if you can translate that to the golf club, start with a practice swing, until you're making the kind of swings Jack was there, play around with a little bit have some fun see how much movement you can make but still keep your head pretty steady and keep in balance but try to capitalize on some of that freedom you saw in Jack's swing you'd be surprised how much farther you can hit the ball uh, the final thing we saw Jack do so well and we cover this on a lot on our videos is keep the club in front of his hands so rehearse that takeaway everything moving together but with this in here club staying on that side of my hands and boy, you can really play some good golf doing that. Hope this helped you a little bit. Uh, there's going to be lots more forthcoming videos of different golf pros trying to bring some things from their swing into your game that'll help you. Again, if you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos. ScratchGolfAcademy.com, we got a lot of material for you there. Thank you.